uh, not so much a news topic, but more an appeal. <laughs> yes. Um, basically, a fantastic video went out this week from Accursed Farms. Um, basically, the Stop Killing Games campaign. I mean, uh, the, the game that was brought front and centre within that content was The Crew from Ubisoft, which is going to effectively cease Sorry. functioning this year. Already did. Already yeah. did. Somebody captured the final moments of the crew, which is fun. <laughs> the final basic, moments of the crew. <laughs> and basically, there are ideas here, a manifesto of sorts, on what can be done to actually stop this sort of thing happening. Uh, Alex, do you want to take up the mantle on this one? Yeah, I, I was uh, inspired by this, but I think it's a topic that everyone at DF really cares about. It's basically uh, ownership of games being like when you buy a game, it is immutably yours kind of like when you buy hardware it's immutably yours like i feel like that is very important it's something that is uh not exactly there's it's since we're buying licensed software as it's called and since we're buying hardware that uh like through eulas uh sorry like end user license agreements as well as like little stickers on the boxes they te technically limit our use legality like legal use of these things, uh, which I haven't been basically the only reason why these exist is because companies put these words on there and since they're businesses, you have to agree with them to buy the product in the first place, but are they actually legal? And the question then is like, has anyone questioned the legality? Has anyone actually brought this to court to see whether or not these practices are legal? And the answer is pretty much no regarding a lot of this, which is why it happens. If it's gray, then you can do it more or less. Um, and with the with the crew, it's an interesting example of a very long history of examples of a game being you bought it legally, you paid a certain amount for that, or maybe you got it free. I have no idea. But what other way? You have a license to the game, and after a certain amount of time, it is shut off. For the, for example, like the crew, it's actually been a number of years since the game out, but there's games that shut off and stop existing like within a few months. You know, uh, what was that one game from Platinum recently? Oh, Babylon's Fall. Oh, Babylon's Fall. You have like that boss key game. I can't remember. Lawbreakers. Uh, yeah, Lawbreakers. Well, that I have, like, I have was... a physical copy of Lawbreakers still sealed. That's amazing. It does get... almost nothing right now. <laughs> I need to get Cliffy to sign it. <laughs> yeah, Cliffy's going to sign Lawbreakers for you. Um, but there's a lot of games <laughs> that just come out and stop existing. And the reason why this is bad is because you bought this game. You should... It would be great regardless 10 years down the line if you could still play it. Yes, maybe no one is in a server populated server, but you can at least load up the game and see like the graphics and play it. Or maybe you could organize a group of friends to LAN it, or you can organize a group of friends over the internet yep. to play it together in 10 years time. If they take a game offline, as in there's no like infrastructure that allows you to connect to play anymore with your friends, or even just get past a login screen, then you have a dead game and it's nothing. It's dead software at that point. And this, a uh, great campaign, can, campaign here that was a lot of research and there's an entire website that you should go to stopkillinggames.com uh, is basically set up like a framework so that you can leverage your local government resources or international government resources to complain about this and then the chance that it is brought up in some sort of legal procedure or a law is made about this because there's enough consumer complaints, well, it increases rather rapidly. Depending on your country, it's gonna be different everywhere you go. This website you should go to, stopkillinggames.com, will lead you through it in your own language uh, and you'll choose like your country that you live in in the beginning and you can basically complain about, very specifically in this case, about the crew. So the the chances are you need to own the crew. I own it. I think a lot of people I who do. actually have Ubisoft have the crew, uh, Ubisoft Connect. Uh, I think it was given away at some point even. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can complain about this. And it, the reason why we want this to happen, and I think you really should look at this, is because it can set a legal precedent about what happens after a certain amount of time. It doesn't mean the developer necessarily has to like support the game forever but it will change the way maybe games are made in the future so that there's a way for a game to exist even after a publisher stops supporting it. So stopkillinggames.com, uh, you can read up on it there. It's very friendly, information's great. Please check it out. Uh, John, what are the realistic ways of preserving games like The Crew, which you know basically I'm assuming are running on 
economically unsound server infrastructure because barely anyone is using them. I mean, I think that's that's the key there is that it needs to they need to be able to turn over that server stuff to the community to allow them to sort of take ownership of it uh, and do do what they will with it, basically. Because right. yeah, Ubisoft doesn't want to pay the money to run the servers. Well, let let someone else take a crack at it. Uh, I think that's <laughs> I think that's completely fair. Like if they have no intention of making money from it, and I know with these large corporations, that's often the thing, right? It's like if they can't make money from it, nobody's allowed to touch it. Is often okay. the mentality, and that's why this is the kind of stuff that needs to be fought in court to basically yeah. change mm-hmm. that. Because then fundamentally, if that is challenged and actually a change happens. Uh, that could also cause developers to rethink the way they tackle these types of games and and their end goal for them uh, if they know right. that they need to comply with this for by law. There could be, in theory, the addition of a built-in offline mode. Yeah, bring back LAN play. <laughs> right, my Just goodness. Just straight up like LAN options. Were, that, that was amazing. I remember, I think it was... I played a lot of LAN games with my old roommate, and I think Gears of War 2 came out, and we, we got it. And we did play it, but we I think it was the game, first game where it was like, oh, you can't land this game anymore. I think mm-hmm. that was the one. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was that, where it's like, you have to go through Xbox Live. Which, at the time, yeah. we shrugged and just did it, but it was like, that was that was the moment... Around then, I remember it being a big step back where you used to be able to just connect the two together, just have your own local thing and just do it. And then mm-hmm. they took it away and it's been gone pretty much since then. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Alex, what are the other sort of uh, preservation Engines. techniques that are being suggested here? Uh, well, I guess one would be the yeah an offline mode, not very doable for all game types. So I think that one is a little bit... It's really more game specific at that point, yeah, yeah, and yeah. perhaps like the compliance with if with a law would allow that as one of the possible like outcomes for a game. I think the other one that John just mentioned is the master server architecture being handed over to an audience, and it could literally just be like a really like a big code dump of of like how this is set up, and it's all by it's all like here be dragons, and that's fine. I actually think that's fine <laughs> um, because if a community is dedicated enough, there's there's enough people to actually want to get that up and running. Um, right. And I and I guess maybe another one would be the the actual LAN option to uh, or to as part of the game like old games. There's no matchmaking uh, to allow people to host their own dedicated servers which is another thing that I think is weird that it's gone for most games. Like I actually do not like matchmaking unless nope. it's a competitive game. I actually like connecting to a dedicated server like 24/7 ED2 or something like that. Like I find because you like you happen upon regulars and you know names after some amount of time communities grow uh with matchmaking the community is like a discord group maybe that just yeah, it's very different. Um, but I would like the idea also as another alternative is uh, with when a game comes out, there's a dedicated server SDK that is shipped with the game to just run it on your own PC. And some of these server dedicated server things that games did in the past was just literally just like a like a, a bat file <laughs> that you double click and you're running a server. It's not so complex. It's incredible that games don't ship with this anymore. But so it is. I mean, they want okay. they want you to subscribe to services, services, yeah. everything services these days. Yeah. There's a lot of gray areas to here too. Like what happens with DLC? Uh, these are other things. Like because you can buy DLC, but then it just disappears. Like you bought it. I don't know. Oh yeah, that's that's the worst. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, there's a lot to be said about this. Just try and support it if you please can. Okay. One more uh, shout out for the URL. Oh yeah. Stop killing games with a double G there because killing and games dot com. Yeah. Oh, the sorry. D-O-W- yeah. Stop killing games dot com. <laughs> 